I'm Nicole Wolf, and I um, go to Beckman Catholic High School in Dyersville, and I, my college for next year is still undecided, and I plan on um, continuing my pro-life efforts um, in college by joining the pro-life groups that are on campus um, and not being afraid to share my values and my morals that I have relating to this pro-life issue, um, and just kind of not be quiet about the things that I care about, um, about abortion and euthanasia and everything like that. So they are more voiceless than we realize. Abortion should be listed as a weapon of mass destruction against the voiceless. Being a voice for the voiceless generally means the unborn child within the womb. But that, lo that little lost voice is one of the many that are being subdued. I want to explain how my experience with teens in crisis pregnancy has changed the way that I view this idea. For me, being a voice for the voiceless now also means being there for the other vulnerable group, young, scared, pregnant women. Since elementary school, I was identified with being pro-life. I excitedly anticipated attending my school's voluntary trip to, to Washington DC for the March for Life. Complementarily, my parents always taught me about the pro-life morals and how every single life is sacred, but I never really evaluated my beliefs until about a few years ago. Having this solid foundation of pro-life morals, I set out on my second trip to the March for Life during my freshman year of high school. Something that really stood out to me as I walked along the streets of Washington, D.C., the sight that caught my eye was actually a protester. He had a sign that said, You are not pro-life. You are forced birthers. To be completely honest, it punched me in the gut and hit me like a ton of bricks. Though standing outside in the cold January weather, trying to get the government to change the legislator mattered, it was truly, I, if I was truly passionate about the voiceless, I needed to do more. I sincerely had to take a deeper look at my beliefs and why being pro-life even mattered to me. The part that really sunk deep was my empathy for the young women going through a pregnancy. Although I had never even been close to someone who's been in a crisis pregnancy, I could imagine how petrifying it would be to have to tell people about a pregnancy that was unplanned. And as that sadness and deep heart hurt truly sunk in, I told myself I had to do more than casually post about this detrimental abortion industry on, on my social media. I had to do something real and concrete I was starting to work on my silver award for the Girl Scouts of America, and I realized I had the perfect opportunity to invest time and energy into something and helping out a local pregnancy housing. Mary's Inn, which is located in Dubuque, became the perfect, perfect contender in my striving to help the young women who were scared, pregnant, and looking for a place to call home. When the girls who were also completing their silver award and I began talking with the center to supply them with what they needed, they didn't even know where to start. We first off wanted these pregnant women to feel loved and worthy. So our first step was creating I Am Loved boxes, which were filled with lots of self-care things and to supply them with some self-confidence in their trying time. We also wanted to contribute some more practical things to this housing. So we came up with the idea for a cookbook. After speaking with the people in charge of Mary's Inn and some of the women, we found out that these women were always busy, but still needed to make supper for them and maybe their, their children that they have. We researched until we filled up pages with prenatal friendly recipes that were easy to cook up. To see the light on these women's faces at the gratitude they had received was a reward that I didn't know that I needed. I genuinely am not telling you this to gloat at all, but to simply show that as a young pro-life woman, it is possible to make changes and stand up for the voiceless. I have babysat and visited the young women in this housing a few times. They are so grateful to know that strangers are backing them up, even if some of their parents and family are not supporting them at all. As a younger generation, we are told a lot that we are too young to know what we are passionate about. But I do not believe that. Working and being around these young women, I know my passion. 
I know I have a passion for helping vulnerable and voiceless girls understand that they are definitely not alone in their pursuit for life. In a society that supports and even encourages the abortion industry, unplanned pregnancies are just an accident that can be taken care of. But I know that every child inside a mother's womb is valuable and precious, just like the mother who is holding them. I believe that if I truly want the abortion industry to be abolished in both legal and realistic sense, I need to stand hand in hand with any women who feel abortion is their only choice. The first step is acknowledging the important role that mothers experiencing unplanned pregnancy play in the fight against the killing of abortion. is helping them receive their voice that society is trying to shut up. Talking with the young ladies who experience temptation to have an abortion puts their vulnerability and loneliness on display in front of me. Some girls have really supporting families who take them in completely and help raise the baby. But on the other end, we have girls who have absolutely no support from their family, friends, or relatives. It breaks my heart to know that these girls feel their voice being silenced for just wanting to keep their children that will be such a blessing to this world. Obviously, the unborn child within the womb is voiceless. Having the mother who feels voiceless and the child who is voiceless creates for a very dangerous dilemma. Encouraging women to give their children a chance to live and thrive, no matter what the circumstances placed in front of them are, has to be number one priority in the fight for life. The woman and the child are of equal importance because they are both living and loved human beings. As a pro-lifer, I know we need to support these women so they realize they are in fact not voiceless at all. They are powerful. They are going against society. They are doing what is truly the best thing for their unborn child, life. When we take time to care, we can see that all women experiencing unplanned pregnancy within, vulner within vulnerability as the baby inside the womb. So I ask you, what will you do today that makes a pregnant mother feel heard? What will you do today that makes a pregnant mother feel helped? What will you do today that makes a pregnant mother feel loved? Thank you.